So I listen to a lot of Jordan Peterson, as you may know if you watch my videos, because I quote him all the time. And something he talks a lot about are spirits and demons. Not in the sense that we think of spirits and demons. He thinks of them more as like emotions. He says usually like the spirit of anger or the spirit of grief or the spirit of yada 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 yada. And when he's talking about when he's talking about spirits, he's usually talking about it in a psychological framework. So when someone is possessed by the spirit of anger, it means that this person has allowed their anger to completely take control of them and all of their decision-making processes. In a sense, they become a completely different person. He also talks a lot about this kind of framework when it comes to truth as well. So he talks a lot about how if you are not, or if you're lying, and if you lie a lot, you are essentially not living your life. You are calling forth the spirit of deception and deceit. And that essence in and of itself is living out your life for you. This thing is living out the adventure of what is supposed to be your adventure. And it's, it's, it's basically hijacking your life. Uh, and he, he talks about this idea in the framework of both emotions and telling the truth. Why the hell am I bringing this up? I bring this up because I have a tendency to allow my emotions to be the framework of my decision making. In, I don't know where the idea came from initially. I think it's from Christianity, but there's this, there's what's called the seven deadly sins. And the seven deadly sins are lust, pride, greed, envy, gluttony, wrath, and sloth. Now, uh, we all dip into these seven deadly sins because humans are sinful by nature, obviously. However, I think some of us have a proclivity towards one or a few. I, for example, have built up a habit of a hedonistic lifestyle. So my biggest deadly sins are by far sloth, gluttony, and to a lesser extent, lust and envy. It's just the truth. I have allowed these emotions, because that's that's kind of what they are at the end of the day, they're, they're emotional states, primarily sloth and gluttony, um, to dictate the decisions I make throughout my life. And I have been, fighting these habits hardcore for the past two years and um, I think you could you could say like overcompensating but they still exist and clearly I have the capacity to fall back in to these old habits to fall back into old sins I've been thinking a lot about repentance and what that actually means you know to repent from your sins. Like, what, what does that actually mean? What it's supposed to mean is, like, you repent, you ask God for forgiveness, and then you don't do the thing again. However, uh, temptation is one mighty beast. It's difficult to be slain. And now and again, we succumb to it. And when we do, we find ourselves spiraling in a sequence of insanity. So why, why, why am I bringing all this up? The past few weeks, my, my schedule's kind of been screwed up. As humans, as the human animal, we are creatures of habit. We rely on our routines and habits for pretty much everything for day-to-day -day operations. We rely, but the point is, I got kind of f***ed out of my schedule, and then I fell back into old habits of utter, like, laziness and just feeling super tired and drained of energy, and just feeling a lot of self-doubt. This is a really stupid state to be in. 
when you start feeling lazy and you start sitting around and you start eating a lot of and you just start questioning your motives, you start questioning your beliefs, you start questioning why you're doing this in the first place, you start questioning whether or not what, what the point of it all is, why you're doing any of this in the first place, and then um, it turns out that self-doubt is just kind of stupid. It's an emotion, and the thing about emotions is that they're fleeting. So uh, you don't really have to take all that much stock into them, which is easier said than done because emotions can be very powerful and sometimes it requires a lot. It requires a lot from us to ignore them or to make a decision in an emotional framework. The moral of the story is, or I guess the point is, not making decisions in an emotional framework is very difficult. Not feeling frustrated when you're sitting around and doing nothing is very difficult. But it's less difficult if you have a plan. If you have a strategy around these things. And planning, for me, hasn't really been a strong suit of mine. It's not a... Uh, I, 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 I love making plans. Making plans is great. I love... Whoa! That is a big boy. Check out this turtle... Tortoise, bro. Are you alive? Yeah, you're alive. What's up, dude? Anyway, I'm in my car now. And uh, I got distracted by the tortoise, so I don't really remember what I was saying. Uh, the point I think I was trying to make was... If you want to avoid falling into old habits and if your old habits surround one of these seven deadly sins which is a good chance that it does having a plan so that you don't find yourself aimlessly roaming around and being in your head and overthinking things will probably help circumvent this issue future me I know you don't want to be put in these situations anymore. I most certainly do not. So let's try and figure it out. Let's try and figure it out.